Well, it's a week until the federal election, and the most recent poll suggests the Liberals are inching ahead in the popularity stakes. Nano's nightly tracking shows the Liberal Party has the support of 35.7% of those surveyed. The Conservatives are at 28.9%. The NDP is in third place with 24.3%. The poll is a three-day rolling average of 1,200 voters and is considered accurate to within 2.8 percentage points 19 times out of 20. And we have Liberal candidate Dr. Hetty Fry. She's running for re-election and she joins us now uh, here in studio. Thanks for being here this morning. My pleasure. Well, not quite. It's kind of early. It is early, <laughs> yes, indeed. But we thank you for being here. And when you look at those numbers, they must be encouraging for the Liberals. What do you think needs to happen from, you know, within this next week to maintain that lead? Well, I think what needs to happen uh, is that people need to go out and vote. Uh, and, of course, we care about the people who are voting Liberal who can go out and vote. I think but this, this is encouraging because we've seen so many people turn out in the advance polls. And if that uh, translates itself into the same kind of turnout on Election Day, it sounds, you know, it sounds promising, not only for democracy, but it sounds as if people are on the move and they are really motivated in this election. But what we've seen is that the Liberals have really pulled ahead here. But now in this last week, I mean, we've already sort of seen um, th there's going to be, a, you know, the Liberals have be are going to become a target now. So what do you think needs to be done to maintain that lead in the last week? Just keep doing what, he, what he's doing. I think Justin has shown that we have a positive plan. He's run an extremely positive campaign. He has not responded in a negative or nasty way to the people who have been really negative and nasty about him. And I think that that's really important. I think what he's trying to say is that we want change, but we don't just want change for change's sake. We want a positive change. We want people who will begin to believe that politicians can be different, that we don't have to be mean, we don't have to be nasty. We can have a vision and we can have a better vision for Canada than we currently have from the other parties. And I think it's resonating to you some extent. You mentioned the advance polls and how we're seeing more people voting in the advance polls and how that might play out on voting day. Do you think that people are more engaged this time around? Oh, yes. I, I think the fact that, that about 70% of people at the beginning, way back in August, uh, didn't know who they were voting for meant that people were thinking about what we call strategic voting. And then we've seen that not turn until the last week. Really, when all the undecided suddenly began, we saw it at the door. Undecideds began to become decided. And I think they were looking for a direction in which to go. But I think they were also kind of interested in Justin's very different platform, very positive, very constructive platform. And the fact that, I think the fact that he's been kept away from the nastiness has really impressed people. Because we've come to believe that that's all politics can be about, being mm. nasty and mean. And we've already seen the nastiness starting. Right. And your party is making a push for investment in Canadians. So what does that mean for families here in B.C.? Well, it, for families in B.C., what it means is that if you are a middle-income person making anywhere between 45000 to about 95000 a year, you're going to get a 7% tax break. And if you have children, it doesn't matter if you're a single parent or dual parents, and you're making under about 150000 a year, you're going to be getting... Um, a tax-free benefit for your kids and that varies with the number of kids you have etc so that if you have one child you'll be getting so much if you have two or three you'll be getting even more but it means that there's going to be money in people's pockets and this is the income group that are actually in debt credit card debt is high this is a group of people who would love to buy a house in Vancouver and can't and so the housing strategy we have is also there to try and help to get that income group and those young people who are trying to buy a home in Vancouver have an option to do that. And so we've got a housing strategy that's bringing back Canada Mortgage and Housing to look at building new, new affordable housing. Uh, you're running for re-election in Vancouver Centre. You're out and about. You're campaigning. What are some of the issues do you, that you feel that are resonating with British Columbians right now in this election? Change positive change though but I think the things that's really the issues that are resonating is housing housing is a big one mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure is a big one you know transit uh, you hear about transit all the time because people take so long those who are working outside the city to go home and to come back and and they get in late the kids are in bed and and it's really something that we need to do something about so that's another one but we're hearing about seniors seniors health 
Uh, I'm the health critic, so I've been hearing about that across the country. Um, and, you know, looking at many seniors are living in poverty or living in very low income here. So I think that's a big one for seniors as well. And, of course, young people are looking for change in the way we vote. They're looking for something other than first past the post. They're looking for more, um, more accountable government, for government they can trust again, as opposed to the cynicism that, that they all have with good reason about the fact that you cannot trust government. Well, we have one week to go before uh, yes. voting day, so we shall see what happens. Uh, thanks so much for joining us in studio My this pleasure. morning, Dr. Thank Hetty you. Fry. And